Hello, Gary Stearman with an announcement that I really don't want to be making, but I feel that you should know our uh, operations director, uh, Bob Ulrich, has suffered a loss in his family. His father, Al, uh, passed away suddenly uh, last Sunday evening, and Bob and family have traveled to his hometown uh, back east for the funeral. And uh, Bob, needless to say, is, uh, is very crushed by all of this and struggling uh, because he and his father, uh, Al, were very, very close. Uh, closer, I think, than most fathers and sons. Al was a great Christian. We know where he is today, and there's no doubt about that. And so uh, please be in prayer for the family of Bob Ulrich, his wife Chris, and their children as they uh, go through this great loss. Thank you very much. Hi, Gary Stearman. Hey, it's the 28th of February, and would you believe there's one more day in February this year? It's leap year, and uh, I almost missed it myself, but... Uh, You've got an extra day to catch up on those things you haven't been doing. Well, we're going to look at some news from Jerusalem today, uh, some, some news that I find, you know, it's, it's one of those items that, that if you didn't laugh, you'd have to cry. And the headline is from uh, Israel Today, International Conference Attacks Israeli Control of Jerusalem. Right now there is a conference taking place in Jerusalem. It started on uh, Sunday the 26th and I'm reading from Israel today. The Emir of Qatar on Sunday, February 26th, opened the International Conference for the Defense of Jerusalem, where for the next three days Arabs and Westerners, Muslims and Christians will attack Israel's position that Jerusalem is its eternal undivided capital. The official program calls for discussing the, quote, legal status of Jerusalem before and after the Israeli occupation. Notice they're calling it the Israeli occupation of Jerusalem. The reality and future of Jerusalem under occupation, they use the word again, and the status of the holy places under international law. So that conference is going on now and uh, drawing to a close as we speak today on the 28th of February. Uh, there will be, will be uh, <clears throat> uh, a little smoke, a little fire. Uh, people will go home satisfied that they've done good work, but Jerusalem will remain in the hands of Israel. <clears throat> Arab media reported the conference is being held amid ongoing assaults on the Muslim-controlled Temple Mount by Israelis determined to Judaize the city. You notice that? Uh, the uh, Arab League is uh, floating this idea out there that the Jews are determined to Judaize Jerusalem. That's why, uh, as I read this, uh, this is one of those, uh, uh, if you don't laugh, you'd have to cry stories. There has been violence, of course, on the Temple Mount in recent days, but it has all originated on the Muslim side. Twice last week, Christian tour groups were stoned by Muslims while visiting the Temple Mount. The violence escalated last Friday, Muslim worshipers attacking police throughout eastern Jerusalem, resulting in the death of at least one Muslim and the injury of 11 Israelis. But the Arab media rarely lets facts get in the way of a good Israel-bashing story, and neither do the speakers at the conference in Qatar. So the Emir of Qatar holding this international conference for the defense of Jerusalem. You know, they don't call Jerusalem Jerusalem. The Arabs refer to that city as Al-Quds. That is their name for it. And it reminded me of Psalm 122 as I was reading this article. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Now, this psalm, 122, is a, uh, a messianic uh, psalm, a psalm for the millennium, when the Messiah returns and sets up uh, his temple. Verse 3 of this psalm says, Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. 
whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord under the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Let me stop right there and just say that in the future there will be a judicial uh, review of all that has taken place on planet Earth. And uh, when the house of David uh, stands in power once again, in Jerusalem, by the way, uh, there will be thrones set in judgment. In other words, people will be held responsible for what they have done. Verse 6 of this Psalm 122 is very, very uh, famous. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And I might add that uh, those who are meeting in Qatar uh, do not understand uh, anything about love for the city of Jerusalem. Uh, in fact, their motivation clearly is to turn it into an Arab uh, settlement and to remove its name once and for all. However, Bible prophecy uh, still refers to Jerusalem as the center of the earth and the capital of the house of David uh, in, during the millennium. Verse 7 says, Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of our Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. And so, Jerusalem in Psalm 122 is the site of thrones being set up. The house of David being established once and for all uh, for the millennial reign of Christ on earth. And there are those powers, and you read about them occasionally in stories like this one, who... Uh, have decided long ago that they would take Jerusalem for themselves. Uh, this reminds me of a prophecy we often refer to, uh, chapter 12, verse 2, in the prophecy of Zechariah, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about, when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Now this is a latter-day prophecy, no doubt about it, and it speaks of the time when there would be those from all over the world who would converge on Jerusalem and, and attempt to essentially internationalize the city. Uh, although, from what we read in prophecy, it appears that, that rather than internationalizing it, they, they fight over it to see who can be in control of it. And once again, I go back to this article I just finished reading from Israel Today. The Emir of Qatar last Sunday opened the International Conference for the Defense of Jerusalem, where for the next three days, Arabs, Westerners, Muslims, and Christians will attack uh, Israel's position that Jerusalem is its eternal undivided capital. So uh, what Zechariah prophesied is already beginning to happen. And I've said this many times. Verse 3 uh, continues in Zechariah's prophecy, And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered against it. You go to the New Testament, and Paul uh, makes a very simple, straightforward, plain assertion. Uh, in Romans 11:25, he says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness at part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and, sh and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. In other words, a day is coming. Uh, just as we read in Psalm 122, when thrones of judgment shall be set up and righteousness shall be established in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city of God's peace. I'm convinced that he established that city himself, and as uh, is several places stated in the Bible, the Lord loves that particular spot on earth more than any other. And so... Uh, I think the one who would try to take 
Jerusalem these days should think twice because we know what's going to happen there. Thought you might be interested in this conference called the International Conference for the Defense of Jerusalem. I doubt that you'll read about it much in the U.S. papers, but it's happening and it's a sign of our times. Jesus has to be coming soon. Everything's falling into place, so keep looking up. <laughs>